Hello everybody and welcome back to Aurora 4X. I of course am Sir Bedian and today we are continuing on from where we left off to get ourselves some warships. Now, I was on my way to work this morning and I had and I was struck with a realization. <clears throat> if we go have a look at our let's take the anteater for a sec. Okay. Component summary cost 1250 galasite for an entire ship right our engines are 100 percent of that cost now we don't have any galasite in reserve and the ship takes 1250 so obviously we can't afford the ship however why do we not have any galasite in reserve because we've been building engines we have 35 of the bastards so if the only reason why the if the only reason the ships cost galasite is because of the engines, and we already have the engines, then shouldn't the ship cost no galasite at all? Yeah, that's what I thought as well. So that will depend on exactly how the game treats the required materials for construction and pre-built components. Now, if the components reduce the cost of those components then the ship should cost zero gallocyte and of course uh keep in mind this list does not include pre-built components so it should not cost it should cost zero gallocyte and there should be zero issues with ship shortage uh, sh uh, ship construction shortages okay the alternative option is that it decreases the total cost of the ship by the build points of the components in which case it'll drop it from 3282 to uh 2082 because of the gas side it'll drop it further because of the um, launchers and shit that we have but it'll drop it at least by 1200 points and then it will reduce the each individual cost by the same ratio that the cost ship is reduced that one doesn't make sense but it's a hell of a lot easier to program so it'll entirely depend on exactly which method Steve used. Now, considering how insanely bananas some of the complexity in this game is, my bet is that he's probably used the first one where it just kills the cost of the Galasite. But I think it's a good idea to find out for sure. So, we are going to build some ships. Um, now... Everything is done except the engines, and there are we have way more than we need. So, let's start construction of our next of our squadron of warships. So, first up, we have our um, namesake ship. So, we are going to start construction. Now, we're going to do two things. April, uh, we're going we're to note this down, actually. So, currently, it is going to take 7th April, 65, for the Anteater. Okay? That is the full build time. Okay, full build time. Um, at a current construction rate based on the build cost and the, sh and the shipyard size and all that jazz. Now, when we hit that task, we should get a different date. And if we click on it now, I'm going to, I, 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 I want two. I want two. Okay. So now we have a date of 22nd July 64. 22nd July 64. Um, at 0%. So that's at 0% day one cost, uh, production speed, okay? So we have shaved uh, May, June, July, about nine months off the construction time. And interestingly enough, it's currently February 64. So June, April, May, June, July, it's like six months. Not that long. So we're going to get a land theater out quickly. If, if 
it does not cost any galacite at all. So if it doesn't cost any galacite, then this is going to get done on the 22nd of July. If it does cost galacite, then it's going to take longer because shortages are going to slow it down. Okay. The other thing that I'm going to do is we need a pair of huntsmen. And there's another way I think that we can figure out if it's going to cost galacite. And that is through a mineral screen. So we can see here the projected usage is 3436. Now this includes the construction cost of ships. And if you are if you pause this episode and go back to the last one, you'll probably be already ahead of me and have already figured out the numbers. But, Huntsman, uh, we have 3436 Galsite usage. Um, it may not necessarily update, but, so, but we'll check the Geranium as well. So, Huntsman, the four... 3436 and 105806 Duranium. Okay. So, if it updates immediately, we should see the Duranium cost jump right away. And we should see the Galaxite cost not move at all. Uh, how much should it jump by? Hang on. Oh, wrong one. Huntsman. Okay. So, Duranium should jump by 808.3. Three. Okay, so we should see 106. All right, we should see 106 and, and change. So, um, I also want two huntsmen. So, we'll not you, huntsman, and add task. And we're going to animals, 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 animal. Um, not sure why there are two lists, but, oh well. Mm. Okay, we'll go for the Black Widow for now. <clears throat> okay, so, add and add. So now if we go to mining, we see that... Galasite has remained at 3436 and ah, but the Duranium remains at 105806. So it looks like it doesn't update immediately on the projected usage. So we're going to run a production cycle. Actually, we'll do a five second tick first, see if it updates immediately. And I'll refresh this as well. Okay. So. It looks like it has updated now. So we can see that, that the usage has now updated to 107728, which is about, uh, about 2,000 units. Uh, I think that includes the cost of the uh, anteaters as well. But, very importantly, the Galacite cost projected usage has remained the same. So it does look like it is the first one. The cost of the components themselves are reduced from the total cost of the ship. So the minerals that, that would have gone to build that component are struck off the cost of the ship. So that galaxite cost is non-existent, which means that these ships should complete exactly on time, which is awesome. All right, um, so we've got a nest. We're getting two anteaters. We're getting two huntsmen. Um, I'm going to want two more huntsmen after this. So uh, two and four. Because two anteaters should be more than capable of smacking down any fighter waves. And four huntsmen. Um, we, like the um, the four Kamal heavies ha had a payload a capacity of 200 missiles. These ones only have four, eight, twelve, hundred 160. So it's significantly less firepower... Um, in terms of missile vo missile salvo size, uh, missiles are better, but there's l there's fewer of them, and that that is a very very important distinction. Um, so we'll see how we go. Um, what else do we need to do? I think that's about all we need to we need to do until this one is done, and I think this one I'm going to tool towards 
Um, hang on, is it 16 or 17? I keep forgetting. Kanga is 16,800, so we need 17,000. Um, this is going to bump it up to 18. This is going to be 16. Fuck it, now we'll use this one. So we'll use this one for, to, to uh, tool the Kanga. It's a little bit close. It's a fair bit closer as well. So, that is a little bit of news. So, let's run the tick. All right, all runners have completed. I believe they were running... What were they running? Galasite? No, they weren't running Galasite. They were running other things. Like uh, Venderite, I think. So we have a lot of Venderite. Uh, all runners... Okay, let's have a quick check and see if Melbourne is still worth sending something to. Getting a small chunk of Galasite would be great. So one more run. One more to Melbourne. And it looks like they're just going to head straight back over there, to be honest. Or completed orders. No, they're, they're broken. Uh, huh. Remove. Yes. I know. They're loaded. They have a lot of shit. Where are they? Oh, they just loaded cargo. Okay. All right, uh, unload all minerals. And while you're at it, you might as well refuel. Okay, so that's fine. Uh, right, this guy's heading to go pick up the Galasite. So, that's cool. Keep on ticking. Uh, we're not seeing a Galasite shortage at the moment. What's with that? Oh, we actually have an income. What happened there? We haven't completed construction of anything. Maybe because we're not building a fighter, as many fighters anymore? It's gotta be it. It's gotta be that we're just not using enough of it. Either that or we're about to just run out of it in, instantly in a second. Yep, there it goes. Okay. So it must have just got a little drop extra and just go from there. Okay. Ben oil band mine, cool. We've almost run out of uh, facilities over there. I mean we're producing the fusion drives, of course we're gonna run out of course it's gonna drain the galaxy instantly. Uh 27 minute car advanced carronade. Free tech, I am very, I'm perfectly happy with free tech. I am perfectly happy with free tech. Um, so next one is 25 cent so degrees, uh, 25 centimeter. So, okay, cool. Oh, probably should have allocated their research lab facility to the current laser we're doing. Oh, we did the capacitor rate. We completed the capacitor um, level six. Which is awesome. Melbourne, tag you in. 30,000 research. And we're only at 68%. That's nice. <clears throat> Maintenance facilities. All right, 5,000 added. We can tool for a Kanga now. Retool for selected class. For a Kanga. All right. Add it because we might as well. I, mean, I can only build one at a time, but it's okay. Of course, this is just going to mean that it, it's going to complain even more about the Galasite, but um, yeah, these are progressing nicely. They're not diverging at all from each other. They are. Are they on target? 22nd July. Yeah, they're a day off, but that's within the... Um, you, you'll see that these dates will sometimes change, the completion dates, uh, here as well. The reason for that is because of the construction cycle being five days. Um, 
like if we were to take a day, you'll. So what happens is the at the estimated completion date, right? Um, the current time will move a day forward, but no production will be allocated towards the progress within that day. So all the completion dates will also jump one day forward. And then when production runs, then the completion date will basically fall back five days to the original date. So if you watch the completion dates closely, it'll tick forwards five days and then it'll fall back to the original date. And it'll tick forwards five days and it'll fall back to the original date um, on the production cycle. So if your date, if your completion date shifts by like a day or two as you're, as you're watching it, don't freak out. It's perfectly normal. It's just the game being weird. Don't worry about it. Um, okay, so we're tooled, we're constructing. A gala site is still low, but all runners are coming back with some more minerals, none of them being gala site, but whatever. Um, do we have anything heading towards here? Yes. We have mines and infrastructure heading here, which is great. None of it's here yet, but that is doing excellent perfect wonderful civilians are finally being actually useful which is great um colony ships and freighters yep yeah. men and infrastructure yep yeah. fine oh unload cargo who's trying to unload cargo and fucking up Hauler Mark 48. Okay, what are you doing? Oh, yeah, because it's doing the reserve level. Okay, we're just gonna scrub that. Um, let's have a look in Melbourne, make sure it actually has. Okay, it has its reserve level of Galasite. Perfect. Excellent. Head back to Australia and unload all minerals. So. Picked up the gal site, but also got a chunk of corundium and scraps and everything else, so that's fine. And all runners are heading back to unload their haul, which is good. I th don't know if Melbourne's worth hitting again. Mm. Not really. It's pretty much dead on. So, Mel Mel Melbourne's fine for the time being. Uh, we'll just unload and then we're gonna go hit Perth because Perth still has lots of minerals and I want them because they are heathen there's definitely something around there uh, yeah, Galasite, no surprise. Uh, Abandoned Mine, Tritanium, bah. Humbug. Abandoned Mine, okay. Come on, unload. Good work. We've got to have a look. Recent deposit. Nice little deposit of all kinds of minerals. Um... The thorium depot, the thorium drop is not too bad. The um, the nine thousand extra boronite is going to help. Not too much, but having that little of it, I'm not super pleased about. We definitely need to bring in more duranium and galasite though, because we need so much more of that. I mean, we have mercury that's mining, and mercury is, I think, I'm pretty sure mercury is sending some pretty fat packets. Um, how much what's how much how much is actually yeah it's like digging 30,000 a year 500 minerals per packet that's 500 a week 500 uranium a week is being added to the stockpile and it's only using 265 so yeah duranium is not a concern for here uh oh space liner awesome more money not that we really need it uh fuel great and everything is going well here comes the galasite i believe it's got 4800 which means this should actually be enough galasite to build everything 
I'm pretty sure this guy's dropping off enough gas site to get us completely covered. Then we'll get the other freighters done, and then we can start these guys on moving um, minerals uh, in from Perth. And I don't really know what we're going to do with the older freighters. Because they're still okay. Like, they're not, they're not 200 slower, but they're still okay. Seems a little bit excessive to scrap just the last generation. What am I mind? And is that 10 million? 10 million. Nice. <clears throat> okay. Good. Ruins in Melbourne has been fully exploited with six terraforming modules. Uh, I believe there's a ship components actually, not... Yep, ship components, cool. Um, right. So, is there anything you're not getting? You're not getting neutronium. But you're getting... You're not getting neutronium or galasite, but you're getting everything else. Great, okay. Um, okay, so Ruins and Melbourne have been fully exploited, which is awesome. Um, we'll leave the ground units where they are because we have don't really have anywhere else to get them. Actually, no, that's a lie. We have... Newcastle. Newcastle A3. Newcastle is here. <clears throat> so that's our next stop, I think. Newcastle, 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 A3, what's A3? A3 is cost 2. No minerals on it. I think we'll just send the team. Yeah, we'll just send the team. Have we put a Xeno team on there? Newcastle, A3... Yes, we have identified it. So, we'll get... Army transport. One, two, three, four, five. That's enough for one. You know what? <clears throat> we don't have a convict mark too, do we? No. Copy design. And we are going to add now. Man. So here's the thing. Okay. Here's the thing. So two transport bays have a capacity of five and a cost of 40 with a size of 50. So they're pretty big. They also have a fair amount of, few of uh, crew, all right? So they're pretty big. The alternative option is combat drop modules. Now, they still have a capacity of five, so they hold the same. Um, they still hold a battalion, but very importantly, uh, battalions will lose morale sitting in combat drop modules, okay? That's the difference. Combat drop modules can be used to land troops instantly, and also as boarding actions. Um, but the fact that they are regular ones means lose morale. They're also more expensive, but not too much. Um, but yeah, they lose morale, uh, which means that they're terrible for transporting long distance. Unless we get the cryogenic versions. Cryogenic ones don't lose morale or readiness uh, in transport. Um, I think they might have some limitation or trick, but I can't remember what it is. So, I think if we get this, this will help us a lot in transporting troops, because we can get smaller troop transports um, without losing uh, morale penalties. And of course, the instant landing on planets is also always awesome. 
So, yeah, okay, I think we're going to run this. So, Q to the top, because I want the cargo handling anyway. I'm going to strip out a bunch of labs. Go, add 10. And that should get it to us reasonably quickly. Can't wait for that research rate bonus up to 500 from 400. Hey, hang on. We have a worker shortage? Probably because civilians are being taken away. Probably because civilians are being taken away. Um, worker shortage. Okay, that's a lot of spare workers. Switch that to source. No. Yes, yeah, source. Yeah, there's a lot of unemployed on Luna. Fair amount of unemployed on Mars. We'll, we'll, switch, we'll switch you to source as well. Um, we are definitely not sourcing, so you guys stay stable there. Uh, destination, yeah, and yeah. So definitely need, need this to be destination because we do have a massive worker shortage. And we actually have available workers here. But, like, it's a fair amount of uranium we could mine here. But we can't really afford it. We, we, we need Melbourne to be uh, the core here. <clears throat> Should we get in construction factories as well? Oh, hang on. Is anybody actually shipping fighter factories? Who's who's shipping fighter factories? No one. Okay, cancel that. Forty nine construction factories. Forty nine construction factories. Supply that. Because we might as well. I mean, they have 300 at the moment. Wait. Wait, what? Why 49? I do not know why there's 49. Okay, I'm sure I had a reason. Oh well. Keep moving on. I think I think I do want more explorers as well. And probably better ones. I think it's about time we updated our, our explorers. Get them faster, get them longer range. I think they're still running on ion at the moment. Burke is old. Oh no, they're my plasma. Still, they do have the tonnage limitation. Good up them to 20,000. Or am I waiting for the... Hang on, copy this. Do I have the advanced geological surveyors? Yes, I do. Two, three, one, two, three. Uh, we'll upgrade those. Ditch that. New armor. No, we already got new armor. Okay. So we want thermal sensors. And EM sensors, better ones. We want... Our... Low, high efficiency engine, 2352. Compared to 1500. But we're also missing a couple tons, so... Um, we want... 
improved gravitational. So two of these would actually give us more than enough. And 2,000. 730 billion kilometers. That's pretty impressive. What is that? 4117 divided by 365. 12 months. Yeah, that's good. No, 12 years. 12 years, shit. Hundred and forty four months. Yeah, hundred and twenty is fine. Uh, maintenance life can't support it as well, but we can run a engineering space. There we go. Nine hundred. We could probably get a much smaller jump drive as well. How big is that jump drive? Forty two. Hang on. Hang on. So the Burke jump drive is 42. This one is 80. So we don't want to use that one or that one because they're just huge. But 42 jump engine military. And we need about 10,000. So 10,400, same as the Burke jump drive. Well, slightly red. And it's 26. It's half the f bloody tonnage of the ship. Well, it's it's half the tonnage. We could get more sensors. We could like fit an entire extra engine in here. This is significant improvement. And I can even bump it up to just make it 1120 for 28. And that will give us a couple thousand extra tons on top. So, uh, no, making it even 12,000. All right, even 12,000. And we're going to call this... Um, um, let's call it... I wish I knew more famous Australian explorers. Oh, well. Classic. the greatest explorer ship on the planet. Voyager. <clears throat> oh, clearly. Okay. And wouldn't that be in the galaxy? Not on the planet? Human culture is only on the planet. Well, no, because human culture is also in space. Shh. If you're going with Voyager... Okay. There are holes in your logic! Quiet, you! Okay, we're going to get that designed. We're going to get ourselves a new, a new uh, explorer ship. Uh, where is it? 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 Who's, who's building it? I don't think anybody's building it. Hammond Shipyard used to build it. But that, that builds the nest now. So we'll run one of these guys. This guy. This guy will do it. Okay. <clears throat> uh, power and propulsion for jump drives. You running the military jump drive so just do that once you're done okay all right we are good to keep on going because we got galasite now and we should wrap up all production well, let's see here. yep galasite is doing lovely perfect Okay, I'll... This one. 16,000. Yeah, this this will actually be fine to tool for it. Get me an extra slipway. Um, that can say at 4. That can say at 2. Uh, no class assigned. That can keep assigning. Keep, keep building. I want another slipway here as well. Um, so we can build three at a time if we need to. Okay. Keep going. Might need a second nest. We have a lot of fighters. Having a second nest would be great. So, yeah. Build me another nest. Uh, select name. We're going to go with... 
Uh, <clears throat> let's go. Wow, that's a couple of really weird names in here. Yeah, that'll do. And add. Cairns has a new jump point found. Great. Whatever. Shipbuilding rate is almost done. Probably could have saved building the nest um, until that was done. Because, like, two weeks. Oh, well. All right. Hauler is built. Uh, we've got two more coming up soon. That will bring us up to eight Hauler Mark IVs. <clears throat> One more. And first Hugen is done. Shipbuilding rate 1300 is done. Now we're starting on our new uh, faster research rate, which is sweet. Um, how long is it going to take to build one of these? 22nd of May, about a month. Yeah, they'll, they'll, they'll be fine for a month. <clears throat> Put one in each uh, fighter squadron. That should work great. Unrest increasing on Brisbane Sea Moon 5. Uh, but you two overcrowding. Yeah, no shit. Probably because they dump. How many people did they dump on Brisbane Sea 2? 0.24 million. How many can you support? 0.13. Well fucking done. Bloody brilliant, you guys are. Fucking incredibly brilliant. Genius. Oh. Pure stroke of genius there. Fucking idiots. Oh. Okay. Whatever. Worst case scenario, we have 50,000 capacity on the orbital habitat. The population shouldn't completely die out. <sighs> okay. Anyway. So, um, now we can shift gear into producing things that are actually extra important. So, 30, 30, and 30. And we're going to run 10% on doing something else, like... Uh, I don't know. Sensor outpost PDC? No, it needs a new sensor first. How much maintenance supplies do we have? Oh shit, we're out. Okay, yeah, build that. There you go. Uh, give me 10,000. 10%, that's only going to take until October. So, no big deal. But yeah, we're, on, we're out of maintenance supply. It would be great if it would tell you that somewhere, but oh well. Okay. Um, is that the last hauler mark for, or is there one left? No, nope, that's the last one. Okay. So, cargo... Uh, no, that's the carrier. So, hauler mark four. I don't know where... These guys are the mark threes. Or runners. That's the one. Task group, or runners, join, and get you guys to pick up. Not our better fleets. This one. Pick up the other three. There you go. Okay. Um. Let's see where we can go to get some good shit. That'll do. 
There's a lot of good shit over there. We've got a million tons of uh, resources over there. Um, Melbourne is lower than optimal, so we don't want anything there. We got mines there. Wow, that's pathetic. 3.3% efficiency. Wow. Yeah, no surprise. Um, you guys have mines and the stockpile. Oh, but you're, you're slinging to Perth. 14,000, 5,000. Okay, we need a couple of mass drivers over here. Ah, but we're, we're pulling automated mines off. I don't know why. Oh, well. Oh, hang on. Uh, yeah, no, they're fine. There's a uh, storm and iridium, and we're slinging, that's fine. Newcastle A2, that's the archaeological dig, that's fine. Um, these probably could actually disappear, but don't care at the moment. Okay, so Perth. Feed your minerals to me. Perth A1. Load all minerals. Important question. Will this, will this obey the, um, the thing? The, um, reserve level. An interesting thought, one that I look forward to finding out. Wow, where where are you? You're in Seoul. Where? Above Australia. I thought I scrapped you. I thought I'd scrap you. Canberra, Victoria. All oh, right, I was using you to run fuel. Well, these guys seem like they've stocked up a little bit. Uh, refuel from target fleet. Add, 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 and hopefully they're all in the same place. Uh, 82,000 fuel should be enough to get them at least one way. They're not complaining about the fuel. I mean, it, it's not exactly slow. It's faster than the freighters. <laughs> All the Mark IV is chasing them. Um, we should probably actually slow down the ore runners. Let it catch up. There you go. Good lads. There's not that much Galasite on Perth A though. That is the problem. Uh, Hugin is done. Great. One more. Grab sensor is 28, excellent. <clears throat> now, there is something I want to show you guys real quick. I'm pretty sure I've mentioned this before, but I want to mention it um, again, just in case. If you take a look at the Hugen and Moon, Hugen, right? Um, so, in the ship display, um, you have two little windows that are a little bit different. You have the ship design display and the class design display. Now, the class design display is everything important to know from the class itself, which is basically a direct clone 
from here. So if we go have a look at the here again, there it is. Okay. And if we have a look in here, you'll notice that they are basically identical. The yeah. Hugen glass recon, 422 tons, three crew, build points, TCS, thermal emission sensor, emission, EM emissions, speed, armor, shields, sensors, damage control, PPV, maintenance life, MSP, AFR, IFR, one year use, five year use, max repair, MSP, deployment time, spare berths, engine, fuel, uh, sensor, production. Completely identical. Um, I think there is some very minor differences, like some things are a little bit, a little bit missing from here, but I can't remember the details. But the point is, in general, this screen is just this one, right? So that's the class that's on display. The ship that's on display, however, is a little bit different. So you'll notice tons are there, crew is there, BP is there, thermal emissions are there, um, emissions are there. Speeds there, armors there, shields there, sensors, damage control, PPV. However, you'll notice the maintenance life is missing. The AFR and the IFR are also at zero instead of 3%. The one year and five year use are missing. And instead of max repair cost, you have the maintenance capacity of 103 MSP. And there's also no intended deployment time. And spare births has gone up from three, one to three. Uh, there's something a little bit funky going on with the crew. I don't, I'm not really sure what it is. But it's gone from three crew to one crew. I think fighter, fighters do something weird with their crew. I know that much. Um, anyway. Then you have engine, fuel, uh, sensor, and classification. And the reason for that, the reason why these are slightly different is because this, you'll notice, right? Max repair is here, MSP is one is here. There's no MSP here, the maintenance capacity is here, right? It's called something different, but that's your MSP. So when, ma, ma, MSP 103, maintenance capacity 103. And the reason for this is because that is pulled out of here. So if we were to take away MSP, uh, let's go to, here we go maintenance transfer and we're going to transfer it to population uh, i'm going to transfer one let's make let's make it 52 okay so if we go in here maintenance capacity is 103 still right that still matches but the thing is this is the capacity if we were to go and then lose one of our fighter engine one of our engineering spaces this number will drop so this indicates the maximum MSP that you can actually store on this ship. Up here is your current. But this is your maximum MSP that you can store on the ship. Right? Um, the other thing is, the other thing, why is this zero? I have mentioned this before. I know for a fact I've mentioned this before. Um, Now, the reason why this says zero is because this is the current failure rates for this week for this specific ship. If we have a look at these, they're about the same age as 0 0.05, right? But they're roughly the same, right? Um, this is the current failure rates for this particular ship at this particular point in time. And that is a very, very important distinction because once you start racking up maintenance clock, your failure rate goes up. And this is related to how it goes up. So this failure rate here is not your initial failure rate. This is your one year failure rate. This failure rate is multiplied by your maintenance clock. So at the moment, we have an annual failure rate of 3% multiplied by 5%. So we only have a 5% AFR to fail. And our AFR of zero, it's not really zero. It's something that's so small that it's rounded to zero. But even that absolutely fucking tiny number 
that is so low that, it's, that the game is rounding it to 0%, that number is at only 5% of what it should be. So it's still multiplied by 0 0.005. So the chances of this fighter failing in the next production cycle is so small that it's basically zero. It's functionally zero for all intents and purposes, right? If we were to let this fighter sit in empty space for one year, the then this these numbers will match these numbers. If we set it, let it sit for two years, these numbers will be twice these numbers. After three years, it'll be three times. After four, it'll be four times. All right. And this, of course, means that over time, your ships start to break down more and more and more and more and more. But it's a very linear progression. Not the amount of MSP that you use, but the chance is relatively linear. It's not exponential or anything because it takes three years to get triple. It takes four years to get quadruple. It takes five years to get pentuple. Um, it's not like it's one year is equal, two years is like 2.5, three years is like five, four, 5%. So it's not exponential. It's a linear progression of failure chance. Um, but yeah, so... At the moment, these fighter, this fighter will happily sit in space and not break. Which is why, uh, generally speaking, this number here is only really important if it's absolutely huge. Or if your ship is due, is due to go out for more than a year. Which is why I keep my deployment times at 12. Because I know that by the time my ship gets back, this will be the maximum. Because I'll always bring it back before it gets to this. Or not long after it gets to this. So I know that realistically, this is the maximum failure chance we're going to get. So um, during a one-year deployment, which is the maximum that you want to deploy a warship, you, will, you can expect two failures. And at 625... We have more than enough, so we'll pretty much never lose a component due to failure, barring exceptional circumstances. So that is why you want to keep an eye on this. You don't want to you don't want it to get huge, but at the same time, it's also not super duper critical that it's super duper low. Because even this starts at zero. And if we go have a look at one of our uh, let's go for not the convict. You don't care about maintenance. Caracal. All right. Class design, 184, 2.6. Current, 5% and 0.01. Because a maintenance clock is 0 0.03 because the production cycle hasn't reset it to zero. Um, once the clock resets to zero, which with the next with the maintenance cycle, it, that will then disappear. But you'll see how like Caracal is a 0 0.03 and that's a 5%. Um, and Kamal is at 0.06, and that's at 10%. And that's just rounding. I think it rounds off to like... Yeah, it just rounds off. But the point is, your annual failure rate and your... In, and your um, yeah, like uh, Leif Erikson, 1.35. Class has it at 85 and 1.2. But the actual failure rate is 116 and 1.6. So it's higher than this. So your survey ships and long-range ships are the only ones that are really going to care about ha not having high failure rates. Because if you start off with a high one, after one year, it's going to be high. After two, it's going to be really high. So that is, some, that is a very important thing to keep in mind when it comes to maintenance. Um, specifically for ships that go for extended durations and for ships with very tiny durations. And this is generally why people suggest um, for short-range strike ship, strike fighters, you don't really need maintenance. And that is why if we go have a look at the Joey, even though it's 4,000 tons, it has no maintenance. There is literally no maintenance on here because yes, it has an 11% increment failure rate. And yes, it has an annual failure rate of 800%, but it's never going to get that high. 
Because it can only go out there for 16 hours. It's going to be out, do its thing, or die, and come back within a single increment. So, unless we happen to walk through an increment, smack a bang in the middle of those 16 hours, no Joey will ever suffer maintenance failures. So, it's going to be extraordinarily unlikely that we will ever need maintenance failures on a Joey. That said, because it doesn't have any MSP whatsoever, if it takes damage and loses its engines, the carrier has to come pick it up instead of the other way around. So, uh, yeah, that is the danger, that is the risk. That's why we have four of those engines instead of one. Okay, and of course the failure. If we do walk in, into the middle of a failure rate and it does happen to roll shit and hit that failure rate, we don't want the engine to be the one that fails. Right. I've prattled on a little bit. Let's go take a quick summary um, of where our empire is at the moment because we're about to run out of time. Um, actually, you know what? Now that I actually have a ship, let's actually go and in, go into a little bit of detail about the ship screen. Um, because I promised, I, I said that we would come back here when we actually had some ships, and I never actually did. So, Baba Dog, let's have a look at you. Um, combat settings is an alternative, in my opinion, a slightly worse one, to the combat assignment screen. Um, combats, they both do roughly the same thing, except... It's a little bit easier in some for some things and a little bit more difficult for others. So, for example, you can't easily switch to fire controls like I can here. I can here. Hang on. Um, Babadag is a Kamal heavy Babadag. Here we go. Okay. Same ship. Let's compare. So, um, so for example, in this combat screen, right, you can't see. You, you can see the maximum shields and current shields. They're up here. So we have the shields. Uh, power, we have here, power, there it is. Uh, grade points, 2,000, we have there, and we have the grade bonus, so we have 34% there. Uh, current and max speed, we have here as well. Casualties, we have here. Interestingly enough, here we can see the total crew. Uh, here we only see the casualties, so we don't actually see the total crew, whether they have too much, too little, anything like that. So we get a little more information here. Crew morale 100%, we get that here as well. Okay. Uh, this is maintenance clock. You're never going to need this in combat. This is for other things. That's why it's up there. Um, you get your um, thermal signature. Um, so you get a little bit more here. But your thermal signature is not something you're going to worry about in combat anyway. So, yeah. Um, let's have a look at the fire controls. Okay. So in here... So, okay, let's go over the, what we're used to. We have a list of all our fire controls and exactly what that fire control is doing at all times. It's visible at all times for the first six and it's scrollable in blocks of six for all the others. We also know, uh, we can also easily allocate by selecting a fire control and then selecting weapons and hitting assign. Uh, we also have assign all and clear and we can allocate ECCM very easily by just clicking here, hitting assign. We can easily set point defense modes and we can easily assign missile to launches. Fairly simple. We have our, cont our contacts and targets in the same location and we can easily assign them. We also have an overall weapon and fire control summary that includes all our fire controls, all our weapons, what, what they're loaded with, whether they're recharged and ready, and a little indicator of whether active sensors are on or off. We also have all of our fire controls, shield controls, sensors controls, and uh, fleet controls. We also have a target uh, and uh, our assignment and target copies, as well as the same location button. Okay, so that's what we have on the combat screen. We also have automated fire, synchro fire, target by TG toggle, and target by Empire toggle. So we have all that information here. What do we have in here? Well, we have well we can't see all the fire controls at once. So we can't really see what they're doing at, at once. We can assign weapons to fire control here, but well, you can we can see that they're assigned, but it goes from weapon to fire control and the fire control to weapon. 
right? We have the same information here, but it's sorted by, by fire control. And we can see what the fire control is doing, right? It's much better organized and much clearer about what each weapon and fire control is doing. Like in here, the only difference between fire control 3 and fire control 4 is the fire control 4 has a number 4 at the end instead of number 3. And this 4 is in the middle of the name and the status, which, by the way, falls off the edge of the screen. So if you have a long launcher name and a long fire control name, you could very easily fall completely off the side and then you can't see shit. Whereas here, yes, it can fall off the side as well, but at least it's organized and sorted and the weapon isn't sitting in front of the fire control. So you can have a reasonably long fire control name and a reasonably long uh, weapon name and still have them on the screen. Whereas here, it's already falling off the screen. All right. Pretty sure it's also smaller, but the text is smaller. So I don't know. Um, you have assignments, assign all and clear. You have assign and clear for targets. So your targets are here. You can't extend the target screen though. So if they have a really stupidly long name, you might not be able to click it. Here, it's limited. Uh, you have your point defense mode, which is fine. You can assign ECCM, but not easily by list. So you can't see easily what the ECCMs are actually doing. You have auto fire and sync fire. But notice, while you have the fire controls, you don't have fleet fire controls and you don't have uh, assignment, target, and same location. And while copy target may not necessarily be too useful, copy assignment definitely is, especially when you have 50 ships. If you have a fighter swarm, these buttons and these buttons are going to save you so much time. This screen does not have them. So you have to manually configure each fire control for each ship one at a time. So assigning fire controls and targets and missiles to all four of these guys, when they have five fire controls and 50 launchers, and well, they will eventually have ECCM. I think we've, I think we're loading ECCMs on the, uh, on the, um, Huntsman? I forget now. Um, but yeah, they have all this. Um, very importantly, you also don't have uh, targeted by TG. So you don't know what chips are being targeted. If you have 50 targets and you're trying to split your fire like I was doing with the swarm, well, who's targeting who? You don't know which ones are being targeted. You just have to target and hope or have a really fucking good memory. So this screen... Will do in a pinch and is good enough for like one, maybe two ships. But when you have a full fleet, good luck. Here's the other thing. The only way to know what fleet they're in and where they are is by reading this and this. It tells you what task force and fleet they're in, right? There's no sorting. There's no organization. It's just a list, right? Um, you, can, you, you can eliminate military only, but that doesn't help when you have five different fleets in five different systems and only one of them is actually engaged with the enemy. Uh, and even, you can even eliminate fighters, but that doesn't help if you're actually wanting the fighters. I mean, look at this list. Even military only, look at this list. And this is just a small set of fighters and ships. We're still relatively early game, right? There's no sorting. Here first battle fleet and it limits by system as well so if we take first battle fleet out into another system all these other ships that we don't that we give literally zero shits about because they're not important right now all these other ones piss off and disappear and we only have the battle fleet that's actually involved so if you oh and not to mention we have our missiles in flight display can't forget that um, so yes, if you're commanding a ships, this one will serve in a pinch. This one is what you really, really want to use. There is one huge advantage that this combat setting screen has over, uh, all the others, uh, over the other one. And that is this one. Launch unlinked missiles. Um, because this and 
here. Where is it? There. So here and here is the only place where you can launch missiles uh, unlinked. Granted, the button is broken and you can only do it when you're under jump shock instead of the other way around. But the point is, these are the only two places where that button exists. You cannot launch unlinked missiles from the from the uh, combat screen. You have to launch them from here or here. And I would much more trust here than here because in here you only launch it for the one ship and you can also configure and see what missiles are actually being launched. So if you're uh, launching missiles while, under sh while uh, attempting to breach a fortified jump point, this is the screen you want. Other than that, stick to the uh, combat screen. Uh, there is also auto fire control, uh, which will auto, but I believe that uses uh, auto weapons. Let's have a look. Auto fire control. Yeah, it's just linked them all to weapon to fire control one. So this is just what um, this is what the um, auto fire would allocate. So. If you want to know if auto fire will fuck up your weapon assignments, click this button, see what happens. If it fucks up your weapon assignments, yeah, your ship is not configured to use auto fire, so don't use it. But this is a good, this is a very quick, simple, easy test to see whether your ship is um, suitable for auto fire or not. And I have still rambled off, off over time. So I'm going to cut it here. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next episode.